Okay, yeah, there we go. So we looked at uh, the uh, the spirit sense. Uh, we looked at how we are spirit, soul, and body, right? Uh, and uh, our inner man, our spirit man, is capable of receiving information, just like how our physical senses receive information from the physical world, natural world. Okay, and our soul or our mind, will, emotions, intellect, it analyzes, right? Makes a judgment to either to act on it or not, either to receive it or not, right? To see whether or the whole thing of discernment, right? It does. So, so what we're going to do uh, right now is, um, you know, as we start, we're going to pray, pray in the spirit, right? Pray in tongues for some time and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us and be sensitive in the inner man. Right? When, we, when we pray in tongues, we are actually you know, sharpening ourselves, making ourselves, we are being edified in the spirit, in the inner man. And we are also, at this time, since we know, we learned that, you know, we want to be sensitive. Okay, Is the Lord, is the Holy Spirit witnessing to my spirit you know, in the area of my spirit? Is he putting certain things? Is he, is he putting things prompting certain things? Is he uh, highlighting, right? Is he giving any visuals? Because we saw the spirit man can see. So we're going to just try that out, right? Okay. Let's uh, let's begin to just pray. I'll, um, Father, we thank you for this uh, for this time, for this day that you've given us, Lord, to, to be in your presence, Lord. Father, we thank you that every day is a gift from you. And yeah, this is the day that you have made. And so we will rejoice and be glad in it. And even at this time, Lord, we... We pray that you would speak to us, Lord. Spirit of God, we thank you that you, you are more than willing to speak, to direct, to lead us, Father God. And so, Lord, we, we just ask that you, would, um, that you would speak to us, that you would put things in our heart um, that we might receive and, uh, and walk in. Yes, Lord, we thank you. That we might hear and do, that we might see and follow. You know, why don't we just begin to just pray in the spirit, pray in tongues for some time, right? Everyone, you know, I just want to want you to just go ahead, <clears throat> open your mouths. Those of you who are watching online, uh, attending online, if you can, just go ahead and uh, yeah, just begin to pray softly in the spirit, softly in the tongues, and and maybe you know, if you've not yet begun to speak in tongues, pray in tongues. Maybe this is the time to step out in faith and do it. Um, speak those syllables that are rising up in your heart, in your spirit. Give voice to that loud enough so you can hear. Yeah, just begin to pray strong. Continue to pray. Um, just focus on the Lord. As you're praying in the spirit, just be mindful of what the Lord is showing, what the Lord is prompting. Um, highlighting in your spirit what you are sensing, right? Just be mindful of that as well. Thank you, Father. Shaking the ring, must be very 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 very
And maybe you can even make a note of whatever the Lord is putting in your heart. Maybe it's a scripture, maybe it's a Bible verse, maybe it's a word, right? Even if it's a word, just write it down. Maybe uh, the Lord is bringing to our mind, you know, about a person, maybe the face of a person. So just write that down. If you know the name of the person, maybe you can pray later for them. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. She became the Hermos, the very paper and the air, the very dear Hermos, the very paper and the air, 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 Yes, Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, Lord. The ever present God, Lord, everlasting Father, that's who you are. You know us better than we know ourselves, O oh Father God. When no one else was around, when we were formed in our mother's womb, O oh God, you were there, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We can trust our lives, Lord. In your hands, yes, Lord, we can, Lord, we can safely, oh God, entrust our, our present and our future, Lord, into your mighty hands, God. You will never let us down, God. As your word declares, those who call on the Lord, call on the name of the Lord, shall never be ashamed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, who heals all our uh, diseases, who, who forgives all our iniquities, who crowns us with his loving kindness and tender mercies, who fills our mouth with good things. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty, so you don't have to feel inhibited in any way. Right? He's your Heavenly Father. Um, and uh, he's welcoming us, he's welcoming you, you specifically into his presence. So step in boldly, right? Step in boldly, step in courageously, step in with the confidence that you are indeed washed by the blood of Jesus and you are the righteous and you are covering uh, is Christ himself. And uh, he looks at you as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So uh, step into that position boldly. You know, wear that crown of righteousness comfortably. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We come to your presence with boldness, God. Yes, Lord, as you said, O oh God, that we can come with boldness to the throne of grace. We thank you, Lord, that throne is a throne of grace, O oh God, so that we can come and, Lord, receive, Lord, grace and mercy, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that your love never runs out, Father God. There is no end to your love. It's limitless, God, unending. We thank you. Thank you for your grace that is limitless, unending. We thank you for your wisdom that is limitless, unending, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We bless your name, God. We, we thank you that we can be recipients, Father God. We thank you that we can be vessels, Father God. Yes, Lord, instruments in your hand, O oh Father. We thank you that you called us to be channels, Lord, of all this, of your love, of your grace, oh Lord, of your wisdom. Yes, Lord, of your power, God, that you called us to be channels, oh God, instruments, Father God. Your spokesperson, oh God. take <laughs> Thank you, Father God. Bless your name. Bless your name. We lift your name on high, Father God. Yes, Lord. Let your name be lifted up in our own lives, Lord, in our hearts and minds, O oh God. Let your name be lifted up. 
We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and all the glory at this time. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so did anyone, um, you know, as you were being sensitive, you know, did you, anyone feel anything, sense anything? Did God, you feel that God is showing me something? You, you know, wrote that down. Anything that you might want to share? You know, anything at all? Online students, you can put in the chat. Now you can unmute and share as well. Anything at all? While we were praying, while we were praying in the spirit, anything you sense, maybe some word, anything. Ah, okay. You okay? You felt okay. You felt uh, heat in your body, right, in your chest area. Okay, and. And hand, what? Sorry. There was some, some. You felt as if your hand was touched. Both your hands. Okay. Praise God. Okay. Anyone else? Um. You know, sometimes we we feel that oh, hey, it's not so big enough, or it's not uh, you know. Solid enough to share, so I don't want to share. Now it can be something simple, so you can share that. Like for example, like I, I when we were praying, um, yeah, I think this. Um, okay, Gertrude is saying, um, I cried in his presence. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Gertrude. Um, yeah, so uh, as we're praying, I just saw this this rocket. Okay, rocket, and uh, and as the rocket was launched. The rocket was not standing by itself. It had something that was supporting the rocket. Okay, and as the rocket was launched, whatever was supporting it just fell. But the Lord was uh, impressing upon my heart. I don't know if it's because of what we were, you know, listening to in the morning about leadership and different roles and so on. Well, the rocket launching, going into space, uh, is a good thing. Is a great thing, but. The, the the thing that is holding it, you know, I don't know what you call it, right? There's something that is holding. And then the rocket goes off and this thing falls away. But both are, both are important. If, if that thing is not there, see, nobody says, wow, what a wonderful, let's call it a stand or a support. You know, nobody says, everybody's looking at the rocket, right? It's going up into space. Wow, beautiful. And then, you know, stage one, the engine's I don't know. Something happens, and then it's it's there in the orbit, and it's you know everybody's looking there. Nobody's looking down at that uh, you know that stand which fell, but that stand was very important for the rocket to be there to be launched. Okay, the Lord is saying that see, all of us have a part to play, right? Uh, so don't say that hey, you know, I'm not like that rocket. Hey, but you were there to hold the rocket so that the rocket could be launched. That's a very important thing. In God's eyes, right? Every small thing matters, right? So, uh, and I just felt that I was greatly encouraged. Okay, so uh, Sunny Moses, as I was praying, my heart felt lightness. It was burden from me from this month. I felt the presence of God touching my heart. Praise God for that. I just felt God saying to me, He is in control. Awesome. Praise God. Yeah, Sanjay, launch pad. Yeah, I guess that's the word, <laughs> launch pad, and the whole. The whole thing that is surrounding the launching, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, Lucy Samuel saw the picture of a star. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. Saw the picture of a star. Okay, um, okay. We, uh, just hold on to that, right? Okay. Um, anyone else? Um, anyone here? Anyone else? Saw something. Felt something. Um, heard something because all this is possible okay so all this is possible because whom do we worship living God speaking God right many times we make God out to be some some theorem 
some formula. We study. Oh, yeah, God is like that. God is like this. Okay, I studied. But the reality is that God is like that, so we can experience. God is like who he said he is. He introduced himself so that we can actually experience the reality of who God is. Right? When God says, I am like this, I'm holy, we can experience God being holy. He says, you know, I'm the provider, I'm the healer, I'm the deliverer, I'm the savior. We who are, you know, partakers of the divine nature because of who we are in Christ, we can experience the truth of who God is, right? Okay, so someone maybe we see uh, Spirit of God put burden to pray more. Okay, thank you, Deepak. Uh, Sam uh, felt like God was saying, No fear, go with full confidence with all that God, in, God is calling me into. Um, Second Timothy 1 7. Let me just read out quickly. Okay, um, okay, Second Timothy 1 7. For God has not given out, given us a spirit of fear. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Um, just one quick question, Sam. Like, so this scripture uh, came to your mind, or um, or it was prompted in your heart, um, or uh, like, was it something that you saw? The scripture reference itself that you saw. Um, okay, came to your mind um, after. Okay, so you initially you felt no fear. Right, so God is saying no fear, and after that, the scripture you just made that connection, right? Is that how? Was that how it was? Okay, super. Right. Okay, so Cyril. Um, okay, you Second Thessalonians, one seven. Um, it's actually Second Timothy. What Sam was mentioning, but. Um, okay, is that a scripture that you? Um, like you were prompted, or you were reminded, Cyril, Second Thessalonians one seven, and to give you rest, who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Uh, you can probably clarify that, Cyril. Right? Put it on the chat if that was. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. No problem. So the thing is this: the reality is this: when we are praying. God is speaking to us, you know, it's not like we just have to every time be, oh, what is God speaking? Did I miss it? Hey, the Lord will bring it back. Suppose we missed it, the Lord will bring it back. He's a person. I say, hey, you know, you remember the day I was trying to tell you this and uh, you were not really listening or you were, your mind was on other things, but you know, let me bring that to you again, right? So the Lord is a person. Holy Spirit is a person, right? So God will bring that back to us. So no problem at all. Okay, uh, Shani Chapman saw this written in red. You are healed. Praise God. Um, okay, so Sanjay, uh, there are uh, roughly 7,000 languages in the world, so don't be hesitant to speak a new language that God wants to give you. Awesome. <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you for that encouragement, I'm sure. And those who have not yet started, you know, begun speaking in tongues will find that very encouraging. Um, okay, so 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 that's the thing. You know, we were looking at how, in the spirit, our spirit sense, you know, we can receive. We looked at several scriptures, right? We looked at that uh, diagram. Uh, let me just share that. Um, okay, um, that's coming up on the screen. Okay, Gertrude says, during the prayer time, I was blessed with a new tongue. Praise God. Awesome. Keep praying, pressing in. Yeah, and the Lord will give more, I'm sure. Okay, so this is what we saw, right? This uh, diagram that we saw, we looked at several verses, spirit, soul, and body. So just like how we receive um, you know, information from our physical senses of hearing, seeing, touching, smelling, tasting, the same way our spirit man is capable of receiving. 
Okay. So the thing is this, our mind, will and emotions, our soul, it's very important, right? When we receive information from the physical, our mind actually makes a quick assessment. What are you seeing? Are you seeing in color? Are you seeing in black and white? You know, all those pictures that we see around, are they in color or black and white? The mind immediately processes and says, okay, these are, these are black and white pictures. You know, you see something, you're able to read it. Your mind is actually constantly giving information, right? Okay. Same way, when you receive information in the spirit, in your spirit man, if our mind is in tune, meaning if our mind is renewed or is familiar with God's way of speaking to us, you know, just like how you said, okay, the next time, you know, when, you know, when, when you sense something as you're praying, you know that God is doing something special, right? Or God is intentional about doing something. Or the next time you see a scripture, you know, pop up or you sense a picture come into your mind, you know that, hey, I'm praying, my focus is on Jesus, and I'm receiving this in my spirit, right? So your mind is familiar, and of course, there are other things that we will do to check, validate, etc. right? But we are sensitive. The next time we hear it, we are, you know, more inclined to receive from the Holy Spirit, right? So our mind is important to assess, to to either to accept or reject, right? Sometimes mind just rejects, oh, that can't be God. It's too wonderful, that can't be God, right? Or maybe it's just me, it's just my thought. Maybe it's just my imagination, right? Uh, I'm capable of imagining these big and wonderful and things. Maybe it's just my imagination. So our mind can actually cancel or accept, reject or receive, right? Our mind can do that. So. So our mind needs to be renewed to the Word of God. Renewed meaning familiar with, engaged with the Word of God. Our mind needs to be filled with the Word of God, right? Renewed to His ways, right? Made new. So we know that hey, God thinks like this. God speaks like this, right? So when our mind is renewed, then we receive. And also we, we judge it or we discern it according to the Word of God. Right? We go to the Word because that's our basis. The Word of God is our basis. The Word of God is our reference point. So we, ch we check and say, is it really God? So then the Word of God is something that we go back to over and over again. Right. So um, it's important that our mind be filled with the Word of God, our heart be filled with the Word of God, like Colossians 3. Let's read that verse, Colossians chapter 3 and uh, verse 16. Let the Word of Christ... What does it say? Maybe somebody can read. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Yeah. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Okay, so let the word of Christ dwell. Right? Dwell. What does dwell mean? Live. Stay. Live. Abide. Live. Right? So, when you go to a hotel, you check in and check out. Yeah? You don't stay there, you don't abide there, it's not your house, it's not your home. But in your home, you dwell, you stay. Right? So here, Paul is writing and saying, let the word dwell, stay, abide. Okay, yeah, uh, read, Caleb, what is it? Teaching and admonition. No, no, the first part again, let the word of Christ dwell in you. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Yeah, richly. Which means not meagerly, not in small amounts, but richly. More and more. Right? More of the word. Let it stay with you. Let it dwell in you. Right? So we might be thinking, you know, I, I'm not able to remember this. I'm not able to remember scripture. I, I read, I forget. Like meditate on the word. Ask the Lord to, you know, to teach. Or ask the Lord to remind and let the word of God be put in our hearts, be sown in our hearts, right? So let, it, let the word of God dwell in us richly. And then it says, in all wisdom, he talks about what will actually happen. The outflow of that, teaching, admonishing, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace, all that is an overflow, an outcome of the word of God dwelling in us, abiding in us richly.
Okay, so when the word of God dwells in us richly, it gives us a standard for actually judging, discerning, is this from him? Is this not from him? Right? So uh, what we are hearing, is it from God? Not from God, etc. Okay, so it's very important that we allow or let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. Okay, so we will come back to these the spirit sense uh, or developing our spirit man. You know, we will come back to it uh, when we talk about the gifts of the spirit. Okay, but just remember, like when you're praying, to be aware of what the Holy Spirit is capable of putting in our hearts. You know, sometimes it's so, um, you know, it's, it's so amazing, overwhelming that we cannot miss it. Sometimes because we are not used to it, we like we tend to overlook and go go past that, right? Okay, okay. So let's move on. So today uh, we're just going to look at uh, we looked at the uh, you know the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, and in, and in connection with that, we looked at the fact that the Holy Spirit speaks and how He can speak to our in a man, right? Um, so today we're going to look at uh, another topic, which is baptism in the Holy Spirit. Okay, or baptism in the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm going to share. Okay, we, we, we can actually look at this uh, book. How many of you have received this book, Baptism in the Holy Spirit? This, you have it. You, you all, you all have it. Sorry. Okay, okay. You need to check and then. Um, okay, no, probably I should have told you last class. Um, if it is there, can everyone have a copy, please? If it's okay, uh, in, in, uh, online class, you can go to the classwork section under resources. Um, you have this book, and uh, do you? No, no, no. Holy, baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's got the picture of a dove on the cover. Um, okay, so um, uh, online students, can you see this? Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to put the first chapter. Uh, is that what you see on screen? Yeah, okay. Okay, fine. Okay, just um, just make a note of how many you're giving away, and please uh, inform. Right? Okay. Okay, it's 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 here. Uh, you can come and see. Okay, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's look at chapter one. Um, what is this whole baptism in the Holy Spirit about? We, you know, you remember that, right? D during the orientation time, um, uh, we we looked at that, right? We we studied that. Baptism of the Holy Spirit and we're being prayed for, etc. Okay, so we're just going to revisit that as part of uh, uh, our teaching. So uh, John the Baptist, when he was introducing the Lord Jesus, like John the Baptist was the forerunner, when he was introducing the ministry of the Lord Jesus, when he introduced him, this is what he says, right? We look at Matthew chapter 3. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Okay. So one thing to um, note here is that that word with, you know, in Greek is um, something that is a word that can be trans translated as or used interchangeably as in, by, with, etc. for. So we can use the terms baptism with the Holy Spirit or baptize in the Holy Spirit, or baptize of the Holy Spirit. It's all the same, right? So you know we don't have to be confused. You know, Bible says baptize with, baptize in. You know, is, is there a difference? There's no difference, right? So it baptize in the Holy Spirit. So John the Baptist said this. He says that hey, this is what is going to happen. The Lord Jesus will do something um, that I can't do, right? That I, I cannot do. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay, so for every believer, 
you know, this is something that is available. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And, um, and we see that word baptize, baptizo, that means to immerse or to dip completely, submerge, overwhelm. Right? So John was actually baptizing in water. He was submerging people in water unto repentance. Right? And here he was saying the Lord Jesus will do the same thing. It will be an experience of being submerged, overwhelmed, you know, or submerged in the Holy Spirit. Right? It's called baptism of the Holy Spirit or baptism in the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is something that the Lord Jesus will do. Okay, Let's look at another scripture. Um, Luke chapter 24, verses 48 and 49. Okay, um, These are the words of the Lord Jesus. Right? What did he say? He said, and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry, which means wait, in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Okay, So he uses a word, he uses an interesting phrase. He says, I send the promise of my Father. Okay, You wait till you are clothed with power on high. So somehow this promise of the Father is, is going to bring about this clothing with power from on high. So he's saying, you wait, I send the promise of the Father. Okay, let's look at uh, Acts chapter 1, verses 4, 5, and 8. You can just follow on the notes. Um, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Okay, so now Jesus is, uh, is, is resurrected and... Uh, He's with them, assembled with them. He's saying, you wait in Jerusalem. Uh, you heard from me about the promise of the Father. Now I want all of you, but these are the disciples who've been following, uh, following Jesus. He's saying, I want you to be, uh, I want you to receive. I want you to have something to do with the promise of the Father, right? Let's look at verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now, verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Okay, so what do we learn from here? This promise of the Father is the baptism in the Holy Spirit, right? And this baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptism with the baptism in the Holy Spirit, is something that Jesus wanted the disciples to have. Why? Because he said the objective of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is so that you might be clothed with power, endued with power, so that you can be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and the ends of the world, Samaria and all the ends of the world, right? So you can be my witnesses. Okay, So you can talk about me, your lives can talk about me, demonstrate what I did, etc. All that, right, is packed in that word. You can be witnesses. So you said very categorically, you shall receive power okay, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay. So what did the disciples do? They waited, right? They waited, and uh, there were about 120 of them all. Okay. Uh, we go to chapter 2, and we, we read that. Uh, Acts, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Okay, um, you can turn in your books to chapter 2, page 6. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay. When the 120 disciples were baptized, um, there were some things that were happening that we're going to read. Right? So we see that, that they were waiting. The day of the Pentecost, that is 50 days from the first uh, Feast of First Fruits, the day of Pentecost when it had come, um, they were all filled. There was some supernatural phenomenon which happened. 
sound from heaven as of a rushing wind, it filled the whole house. Um, there appeared to them divided tongues. Verse 3 talks about that. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. Okay, that's the first thing that we notice here. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, the Spirit gave them the utterance, gave them the words, they spoke it out. Very important for us to understand. Okay, so they were filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Okay, then uh, what was the reaction? What was the response of people around? Okay, so uh, if you turn to Acts chapter 2, okay, let's turn in our Bibles, Acts chapter 2, and um, verse 11, okay, Acts chapter 2, verse 11. So this, this we see as a response to the people being filled with the Spirit and praying in tongues, or speaking in tongues, right? So this is the response, verse 11. We hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So they were all, verse 12, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others, mocking, said, they are full of new wine. Okay. Verse 7 says they were all amazed and marveled. Okay, So they were amazed, they marveled, they were perplexed, meaning they couldn't figure out how this was happening, so they were a little um, worried, they could not understand. And there were also others who were mocking, meaning they were making fun. They are full of, you know, they're, they're, they're drunk. Okay. So this, is, this was a response to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right? Not everybody was in agreement. Not everybody was saying, praise God, wonderful things are happening. No, they could not understand. They were amazed because they knew this was something supernatural, right? because they were speaking in other languages. Probably they knew some of the people who had gathered there that, hey, these people had not moved out of this place. Um, you know, how can they study this language? Suddenly they are speaking, right? So they were Arabs, Cretans, and all those others who were there, and then they heard these, um, these languages, right? So that is what we see there. Okay, then Peter, Acts chapter 2, verse 14, he, he stands up. And he relates this whole thing of the outpouring, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He relates it to um, what Prophet Joel prophesied. And this is what he says, right? Um, verse 16, Acts chapter 2, verse 16. But this was what was uh, spoken by the Prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. So he quotes from Prophet Joel, chapter, uh, Joel chapter 2. And he says, this is something that was already spoken of, already planned by God, already spoken of in the book of Joel. So, so these disciples, you know, they heard this for the first time when John the Baptist introduced Jesus, right? That there will be this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, Peter now makes this connection with prophecy of prophet Joel is saying this was spoken of you know centuries back it was spoken of that there will be this outpouring of the Holy Spirit this is the same thing that prophet Joel spoke about so so we see this he's making this connection you know, he's he's speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit right and he's and he's sharing this okay so but when you look at Joel 2:28 onwards you see that uh, you know several other things are mentioned okay what are those things he's talking about fire he's talking about you know uh, what are some things yeah prophecy dreams visions right let's look at joel chapter 2 okay joel chapter 2 28 <clears throat> so he talks about um, that he will pour out his spirit on all flesh uh, there will be prophecy, there will be dreams, there will be visions, 
right? And verse 30, I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, etc. Okay. And here, however, we see that there is the sound of the rushing wind. There were these tongues of fire and the supernatural utterance of praying in tongues. Okay. But Peter makes this connection and he says, you know, this is exactly what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Okay. So we understand that the manifestations of the Holy Spirit or the expressions of the Holy Spirit are varied, they are different, right? Um, and then it is the cause is still the same. The cause is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? Okay. Um, then let's look at um, Acts chapter 2. Okay. Acts chapter 2, 38. Sorry. Let's go to the, um, the last few verses. So he's saying, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Repent and be baptized uh, in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the a gift of the Holy Spirit, verse 39, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as our Lord our God will call. Okay, So this gift of the Holy Spirit, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, was not limited to the disciples of that day. Okay, That's, very thing. That's something that he's establishing. Hey, this, what you see, what you hear, is not just for us. This 120 who gathered here, right? It's not just for us. It is for, to you, your children, and to those who are not here, who are afar off, as many as our Lord will call. Right? God speaks, God invites them, they respond to it, they repent, they come to the saving knowledge of Christ. This is for them. This gift of the Holy Spirit is for them. Right? And that is why we are here today enjoying the same gift with the disciples enjoy right? it's because of this promise you know this truth that is valid for generations right even all who are afar off whom the lord our god will call okay. so um so in the book of acts we see there are several plays of at least five times when believers are filled they are baptized in the holy spirit and we see the supernatural things happening, manifestations happening. I think we studied it earlier, right? Quickly going through, maybe I can ask some questions, okay? First one is this, what is the second time? First one is when the when 20 disciples are gathered, then there is the man, baptism of the Holy Spirit, they speak with tongues, etc. What is the second time in the book of Acts that we see the same thing? What is the second time? It okay, need not be in order, but you can just tell me. What is? What do you recall? People being filled with the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues. Anyone? Okay, online students, I put the notes there, so that's one which is which you can't count. You can tell me the other times. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, happened in Acts chapter 2. The disciples were gathered, right? The Holy Spirit gave them utterance, they spoke, all this. What were the other times in the book of Acts that we studied the same thing or similar thing happening? Any one instance? Come on. Huh? No, 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 no. Uh, I'm, I'm, the, my question is, what were those other times? Like, tell me about those other times, where it was, who were the people, when a similar thing happened, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they, the supernatural things happened. Okay, this is one instance. There were four other times when we see the same thing. I think we studied it, right, in detail. We were going one after the other. Okay, uh, online students? Huh? In the house of Cornelius. Okay. Then. 
Mm. Mm. So that is House of Cornelius. Peter goes to the House of Cornelius and then happens. Okay, Gertrude, accept a accept a eight. Okay, that is um, at Samaria, right? Philip goes Samaria preaches the gospel. Samaria is saved. Then what happened? Peter and John go there. Okay, so Samaria, Cornelius. Then where else? Okay. Uh, Paromita accepted tennis, Cornelius' house, right? Where Peter goes. So, okay, so we have now three early ch church, Cornelius' house, Samaria, three. What are the two other times? At Ephesus. Okay, so Ephesus, what happens? Who are the people involved there? I'm sorry. When Paul was in, okay. No, Paul himself was in Ephesus. He meets the disciples there. So that's uh, that is what happens. Okay. So Ephesus is Acts chapter 19. Okay. So Paul goes to Ephesus. Uh, he meets some disciples there. Then he asks them, "Are you?" You know, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So then the you remember this interesting conversation, right? They 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 reply saying, What is the Holy Spirit? We don't even know that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he begins to he begins to teach them, gets them baptized in water, and then um, they are filled with the spirit, it says. Okay, then where else? Hmm? Yeah, when Saul himself when he has the encounter with Jesus, that, that we see in Acts chapter 9, right? Or is it, uh, yeah, I think it's, yeah, Acts chapter 9, right? On the road to Damascus, he has the encounter, and then we see that he is actually baptized, right? He's, he receives his sight, and he's baptized. Who's the person who prays for him? Ananias, right? Ananias goes, prays. And this happens. Okay, we'll take a break and then we'll come back.